6.2 unit circle. So we're going to talk about the unit circle. We'll take a little bit before we get there. We're going to cover some of the definitions that lead up to it and uh, some of the definitions of the trig functions within circles. So um, this is, uh, it's important this section. You're going to run into all of the concepts that are going to be covered in here the rest of the semester. So the unit circle has a center, has its center at the origin and a radius of one unit. Okay, that uh, looks like this then. So we're saying that the radius is 1. And that means that we have an equation for this as well. We know then that x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay. Um, well, based on what we already know from trigonometry, then we can come up with some uh, definitions that you know apply to the xy coordinate system. So let's say that we're interested in this point, and that is x, and that's y. If we make a right triangle here by going straight down, then this is your x and then this is your y. Then your trig definitions from right triangles would tell you this. They would tell you that the cosine of the angle that we just that we have here that was given here would be adjacent, which is x divided by 1. And x divided by 1 is just x. So the cosine of the angle is just the x coordinate on the unit circle. The sine of that angle is y over 1, because it's opposite over 1. Well, y over 1 is y, so the sine of theta is going to be just y. And then finally, the tangent of theta equals um, opposite over adjacent, right? So y over x, and that does not simplify, but that's why this is y over x. Now x can be 0 because you can't divide by 0 so that is important to keep in mind. Okay, so these are the basic trick definitions and they would give me exactly uh, so as long as you're between 0 and 90 this will work because then you can draw a 90 degree triangle and then we can say that the x coordinate is the same as the cosine and that the y coordinate is the same as the sine. Okay, from then you can also then uh, go from a sine to a cosecant because if the sine is y, then the cosecant is just 1 over y, right? Because they're uh, reciprocals of each other. So, same thing over here. Cosine and secant, they're just flipped. And tangent and cotangent are just flipped, okay? All right. Um, well, that breaks down a little bit if you really think about that. That, does, that would break down if you go further. So, like, if we go past 90 degrees, you know, what, what do we do here? Well, this is where... Trigonometry again just defines these to still be true. So in trigonometry, we're and if we're on a coordinate plane like this, we're just going to define the cosine of the angle as the x coordinate. So that will still work here. The sine is the y coordinate, the tangent is y over x, and then these follow the other three, the little sisters and brothers follow from the, the same definitions that we're going to use. Okay? Alright, so how how do we use that? Well, for example, um, if, I'm tell, if I tell you that I have a point that's on the unit circle, then you should be able to find the tangent, the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. So I'm not sure why I spelled that out. That's just cosecant. Use it this way, right? Okay, so square root of 3 over 2, that's the x. So that's the cosine of theta. That's the y. So that's the sine of theta. So that means that the tangent of theta is y over x. Well, y over x is a half divided by the square root of 3 over 2. So the tangent of theta then would be, you're going to flip the second run, right? So we're going to multiply it by 2 over the square root of 3. So that's just 1 divided by the square root of 3. Okay? Now I do think that, so you can do this strictly on the definitions. I, I would strongly encourage you to draw pictures here. And actually for a while there, um, I would require it. And so on tests and quizzes, you may actually not be able to get full credit unless you draw the correct pictures. So, square root of 3 over 2, that's the x. This is the half, and since we're on the unit circuit, we know we have a 1 here. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, so now I have the three basic ones. So then if I still need the cosecant of theta, then I just flip this one, right? So that is just 1 over y, so that's just 2. Secant of theta, I'm just going to flip the cosine, so that becomes 1 over x, which is 2 divided by the square root of 3. And I'm okay with you leaving the square root in the bottom. And then the cotangent, 
that would be the last one, that would be x over y, so that should just be the square root of 3 over 1, which is just the square root of 3. Okay, negatives are important in this whole story. Okay, keep in mind that if you were in, if you were strictly in right triangle trigonometry, you could never have a negative cosine or a negative sine because you know triangles don't have negative side lengths. But when we use trig definitions, you can. So the cosine of theta is the negative two over five. The sine of theta is the square root of twenty one over five. So negative two over five would put you just under halfway, right? So then if you go straight up, then the triangle that we're actually interested in is this triangle. So this is the negative two over five. And this is the square root of 21 over 5. Okay, if you square this, by the way, so square root of 21 over 5 squared, be what 21 over 25, and negative 2 over 5 squared is 4 over 25, so that's 25 over 25, and the square root of that is just 1, right? So see that you are indeed on the unit circle. Okay, um, so then the next parts would be to find the tangent. So the tangent would just be of theta would just be y over x. So y over x is the square root of 21 over 5. And then we're dividing by another fraction, so we might as well flip it right away. Okay, and this is where the negatives start to become important. This negative matters. So it's a negative square root of 21 over 2. Okay. Um, the cosecant <clears throat> would just be flipping this one. So no negatives there. But then the secant of theta, if you flip this one, you do still have that negative there. So it's a negative 5 over 2. So that's a negative. So then the cotangent of theta is this one flipped. So again, we have a negative there, and that's important. Okay? So that's using the unit circle and finding all that values. Six values. All right. <clears throat> Here it says find the exact values of the sine, cosine, and the tangent. Assume the point given... 4, negative 3 is on the terminal side of an angle in standard position. So in standard position means that we started here, right? And 4, negative 3, <clears throat> 4 would be an x value, and negative 3 would be a y value. So we might be somewhere over here, right? Okay. Uh, let's erase the, one of those lines first. So, okay. Okay. Right angle there. <clears throat> And now let's find the sine of theta. And we are no longer in the unit circle, so we're going to basically mix trigonometry with right triangles here. And so your angle is here. Okay? It's always with respect to the x-axis. And that means that the sine is opposite, negative 3. It's y over, and I'm going to call this m. And m stands for a magnitude. So we actually need to figure out what that is first. Well, it's a right triangle, and it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So it's a negative 3 over 5. The cosine of theta, if you're in quadrant 4, is, well, anywhere, it's x over m, but it's positive. It's 4 over 5. And then finally, the tangent of theta. So the tangent of theta would be y over x, right? So y over x is a negative 3 over 4. Okay? Okay, um, do we do anything else there? I don't think so. All right, good. All right, so now let's go to the unit circle. So you're going to have to fill in this whole thing sort of on your own. And I gave you a larger copy in case you wanted one. Uh, but I wanted to have a little bit that I can show you here as well. So um, <clears throat> what this is going to give us are the commonly used rotations in our problems and then including with all values that might be of interest to us. So that means the degrees, for example, if you don't rotate at all, you're at zero, and zero degrees is zero radians. And if you're on the unit circle, then this point over here must be one, zero, right? So that implies that the cosine of zero degrees is going to be one, and the sine of zero degrees is going to be zero. Right, because the cosine is the x, the sine is the y. It also means that if we do this in radians, that the cosine of zero, notice that you, if you write it as radians, you don't include any units, it's also one, and that the sine of zero in radians is zero. Okay, so the next rotation up is 30 degrees. So these are based on all of the values that are here are based on our special triangles. So if that's 30, then, you know, the top one over here would be 60 if I made a right triangle out of this. 
So I actually am going to make a right triangle out of this. Okay? Uh, well, 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians, so that needs to go over here. I guess they already have a fraction by there. Might as well use that, right? So we'll just call that pi over 6. So that's pi over 6. Okay, so what coordinates go here? Well, you can now use uh, right angle trigonometry to find some of those values. So if you had a 30, 60, 90 triangle, that would look a lot like this and the 30 degrees is here, and then the 60 would be here, and the 90 is here, and then in that triangle this would be 1, this would be the square root of 3, and this would be 2, right? And the cosine would be adjacent, so I'm looking for the cosine of 30. The cosine of 30 degrees is adjacent, which is the square root of 3, over hypotenuse, which is 2, so this value must be square root of 3 over 2 because the x-coordinate on the unit circle is the cosine of the angle. Well, the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, so this must be square root of 3 over 2. Okay, same thing with the sine. The sine of a 30-degree triangle would be opposite, which is 1, over hypotenuse, which is 2, so that is a half. Okay, am I on the unit circle? Well, let's check. Square root of 3 over 2 squared, so that would be 3 over 4, plus... 1 over 2 squared, that's 1 over 4, and 3 plus 1 is 4, over 4 is 1. So yes, it works, because the square root of 1 is 1. We are on the unit circle, okay? So that gives you the values over here, and then you do it for all the other ones, right? So the next one would be a 45-degree triangle, which would be pi over 4. And then you, hopefully you actually know some of these already. So, you know, this is 1 over the square root of 2. And 45 is 45, 45, 90, so this is also 1 over square root of 2. So you see I'm running out of room a little, so yours, the, the, the other one that I gave you, I think you'll have a little more room. Okay, not completely done. Let me help you one more way. <clears throat> and I really think you ought to do this without looking at it, because you can clearly look this up and just fill it in, but you would be, uh, you won't get to use a unit circle filled in on your tests or quizzes for quite a while. Okay, so what you do need to get in our sort of grasp is how can you cheat a little bit. So if you know this one, so if that's 30, then this is also 30 degrees, right? Okay, so we're going to have to work on the degrees here, and I'll help you there in a second, but the, the easiest one is to say, well, from here to here is an x, and so that x also occurs over here. So this still must be the square root of 3 over 2, but now it's in the negative direction, so it's a negative square root of 3 over 2. It's still up, so the y value here is identical to the y value there, so that's a half. Well, that means that this is also the square root of 3 over 2, and then with a negative here, because the x is still negative, right? And here you get a negative 1 half. And then finally over here, we still have the square root of 3 over 2 here. It is a positive x, and the half now becomes negative because it's in the negative y. So if you find 1, you actually find the other locations here, here, and here as well, okay? Okay, so then the other thing is that, to me, this is only based on two triangles. It's a 30-degree triangle or a 45, because, you know, from here to here is 30, and then uh, we'll do this in a slightly different color. So from here to here is 45. Why did you not make... From here to here is 45. And then the next one's two thirties. So from here to here, right, it's two thirties. So that's actually 60. Well, 60 is just... The same thing as the 30, 60, 90, except now it's 60, 30, or 60, 30, 90. So these values here somehow return. They return over here somehow. I'll let you figure that out. Okay? So then 60 is here, so that means this is a 60. Well, there must be two 60s. Then the next one here would be 180, but that means if this is 30 this way, and this is 180 degrees, which you should know, then this one's 150 degrees. And so you can puzzle this thing together fairly quickly. Okay? All right, once you get all that done, then you can start answering some questions over here. So let's see if I can get this. So I started purposely with cosine of 30. So the cosine of 30 would be what? The cosine of 30 is the x value right there in the unit circle. So square root of 3 over 2. To figure out what the sine of 60 is, you would need the y value over here. So once you know that value, you can answer this one. The cosine of pi over 3, well pi over 3, if that's pi over 6, that's pi over 4. This must be pi over 3, right? So if you knew the x value here at 60, if you knew what the distance was from here to here, that x value would be answer here. And so you need to answer all these questions. There are a couple tricky ones here. So for example, you know, that one here and here might be a little challenging. 
Um, let me see, do I see any other ones so quickly? I know there are a couple more in here, but I can't find them right now. There should be a 270 here somewhere, so over four. Yeah, that's like over here, maybe. Okay, so there are some tricky ones in there that uh, you'll just have to figure that out on your own. Okay, good luck.